So I got a lot of questions and a lot of you guys might be curious as to, I am properly, by the way, in case you don't know, I'm properly baptized in the religion of science, okay? I did the whole university thing. I went through all their deals. I did really good. I was nominated for all kinds of special deals by whatever. I'm a published author, all that stuff science-wise. So I'm properly baptized in that religion, just in case anyone gets all worked up ahead of time. But at the same time, and you know, for those of you who are familiar with the shooting tutorials, I mean, Intimately familiar with physics and things like that, right? And history for those of you guys who might have followed some of the political whatevers, okay? So how does a guy like me still kind of find himself entangled by the, the web of the scriptures and of what most people would maybe assume to be religion, okay? So here, here's the deal. I understand a lot of folks, a lot of subscribers are really cool guys. I've got a lot of friends who are maybe agnostic, a lot of friends who are totally atheist, and I do not blame them one bit, and I'll explain why. I've got a lot of friends who are super religious. I've got friends all over the place. Yeah, here I am, Donald Trump mode, right? Everyone, I love everybody. I love everybody. But no, seriously, I'm, I, I really don't look at people's... Uh, peripheral what they what they state they believe because I recognize in myself that a lot of times what comes out of my mouth or what I'm trying to communicate to other people ain't exactly what's in here. It's, it's very dynamic what happens in here. And if there's a general positive direction in someone's heart, honestly, trying to seek that which is good, the two basic solid gold requirements in life, in my opinion, if someone's kind of generally focused on love or the preservation of life, of this species, if you want to biologically get into it, if you want to put a scientific definition on love, it's uh, the all the peripheral requirements to maintain the proliferation of our species, okay? If you really boil it down and think about it, okay? That's what love would be quantified as or qualified as scientifically. Uh, but at any rate, all that stuff, right? What is... What is the big question of the universe? What makes Rex ticks? Uh, but but if you got, but if you got someone who's generally in, shooting in that direction, I can I can deal with that. I can dig that because that's the qualities I believe that make a person a solid person. I don't care what flavor of religion you are. I really don't. I've got a lot of friends who are Hindu, Buddhist. I've uh, known guys from uh, the Muslim deal. I've known guys uh, mostly from the Christian deal. I mean, I know people from all over the place. I personally subscribe probably most to the Christian deal, okay? But that's a general characterization. I don't fall into any specific denominational categorization. And for the, for, for the um, reason, really, that in my opinion... Religious denominationalism has really misrepresented the truth of what's really going on, okay? And so when we have this, dis this discussion, I hope that you guys can realize, I'm going to adjust this a little bit here, see? I hope you guys can realize that uh, I'm not trying to convince anyone to believe in anything or go to any specific church or subscribe to my views. I'm not the smartest guy on earth. I have come to the fact over a long period of time, over uh, lots of being wrong and stumbling around, trying to convince everyone to believe like I believe, that everyone comes from a unique perspective, okay? We all are placed on this different little planet flying through space, this little rock flying through space, and we have this vast landscape of options and observations and different things going on that different people see from different angles. And uh, I recognize that people are going to have different viewpoints of the same thing from different angles, okay? And so recognizing that, I have a lot of forgiveness and a lot of tolerance for people of other deals. I will try to ask them, and I'm curious, but I'm, I also hold fast to that which I have determined solidly to be true. Um, all that stuff being said, what makes Rex tick, okay? Well, all through my life, I kind of wanted to do what's right. That's been a solid, I can honestly say that that's been like a solid feeling that I, that 
I've recognized that in order to feel fulfilled in life, I have to be doing what doesn't violate my conscience. Now, whether you want to um, quantify what the conscience is scientifically, a lot of people would say that it's the genetic memory uh, ingrained into our brain, if you want to get biological on it, uh, which uh, helps the species of humankind, or homo sapiens, sapien, or whatever you want to say, okay, to advance in such a way to where, you see, our species on an individual level, this is kind of a weak critter right here, okay? I don't got like claws, I don't got giant teeth, I don't got all this stuff. I can invent things in like firearms and whatever, you know, like uh, assault rifles and things to kill everything if I wanted to. But honestly, that's not like what's really gluing the species together long term, okay? And I'm talking long term. What really glues our species together, what preserves the continuation of Homo sapiens sapien, is our ability to really have morals. Now, now, chill, chill, dig this for a second, because now you can, you know, dispute on exactly which morals are moral, okay? But in a general sense, okay, um, most moral values are built to preserve the continuation of the species long term. And uh, if you want to get at it biologically, that could be considered to be like, okay, so if the species doesn't have these morals, it's going to have self-destructive behavior or behavior that destroys the community group or does not advance the raising of a family effectively. In order to properly download all the collective information we have as individual organisms, as a homo sapien, into the next generation, okay, that's where we really, that's where we have our strength is when people properly download all the useful information, and a lot of it's useless information too, but mostly the useful information is the, the priority here, uh, into the next generation. In order for that to occur, there has to be a preservation of a family unit, okay? In which mommy and daddy, truly loving their actual kids, would download that information into them, just uh, from, it's like, it's something that can't be described very easily, but everyone knows it's true. Everyone's felt it before, and you could scientifically line it, line it out, you know, through epigenetics or whatever, but, and through which in the epigenetics, you probably have the, uh, what do you call it, instinct, okay, to train your kids and to love your kids. People would call that instinct, right? So you have all these scientific guys explaining things scientifically, and then they scoff at the whole spiritual um, perspective. Now, that's interesting to me because in my observation personally, I would think that in the positive sense, not, not talking about all the apostate religious traditions of silly religious traditions, okay, which exist in plentiful amount, um, that the, the quality parts of the religion are really, in fact, the instincts that we have. That's why people, religion calls it conscience and science calls it instinct. They both preserve the species unit as a whole, okay? You guys follow me, sort of? Okay, now dig this. So in my observation, if you had a Venn diagram and you had science over here and religion over here, they would kind of intersect a little bit on, on a certain spot and in that spot, I think that's where the truth lies, is where they intersect. Because, in my opinion, you know, I can get sentimental about religion, sure. I mean, we're all raised in our own religious traditions and things like that. And we all have a certain um, want to have our, you know, our upbringing or whatever to be true. But in reality, especially when you get close to death, a guy gets real honest. I've been there a couple times on a couple different deals. Maybe some of you know that. Maybe some of you who know me personally know better than that. Um, but honestly, <laughs> if, you want, if you really want to look at it, when you get really close to death, you get really, really honest on how this stuff works, okay? And all the stuff that uh, doesn't really hold true, when you kick the tires on the car hard, you start to notice where the, where the loose bolts are. And then you can go and fix the problem and discard those things which aren't valuable and keep the things essential to the, to the machine. 